This is the Dan Benjamin Hour for Wednesday, April 15th, 2015. I'm flying solo today. Uh, today's been kind of a weird, kind of a, a weird, a weird day. My kid woke up really early with uh, like an earache. It seemed like he had a cold and it went away and then he had an earache. If you've ever had a kid wake you up early in the morning uh, with, uh, with an earache, it throws off your whole day. So I got here later than I like to get here. And then uh, today on Wednesdays, I do Amplified with Jim Dalrymple. It was a good show today that he and I did. And, uh, you know, I have, I have a lot of fun. I have a whole lot of fun doing that show. But when I do a show like that, it, you know, you start that at, you know, you start prep for that at 1030, 11 o'clock, you go live. I just got in too late and I couldn't, couldn't do the show, uh, this show in the morning. So here I am doing it in the afternoon. And uh, you might say to yourself, well, okay, that's all right, as long as you do a show in a day. But there are people who, you know, they like it. They like it in the morning. And I like doing it in, in the morning. It's much more fun for me. I'm more, I'm, I'm more awake. I'm more energetic, you know. Like, I, I, at the end of the day, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm ready to eat a little something. See that blackness? That's Hattie's shot. She's not even in the room. She's busy working. She's doing a sponsor calls for you guys and for this show. So uh, she said, I want to be on the show. I want to be on the show. I'm supposed to be on the show. I said, yeah, you're supposed to be on the show. But today I, I'm just going to blaze through some links and get this out there because, you know, we've got to do a show. But uh, we have we have the Hattie uh, soundboard. The little long, so, the little you know, long if box. We, if we miss her that much, we'll just cue up one of those sounds. And uh, and that's it. Anyway, there, there are a whole bunch of, uh, of fun links that I want to share with you guys today. And uh, we've got some good guests coming up this week. And boy, do I have a good grit planned for you on Friday. I can't say anything about it yet. Can't say anything about it yet. I may actually, it may have an embargo on it. So I may have to record two grits. I don't even know. But uh, the, the episode of uh, the Big Lebowski that Merlin and I did talking about uh, 5 by 5 at the movies came out yesterday. So it's 5 by 5tv slash movie slash 3. And uh, we spent two and a half hours talking about an hour and a half a movie. But I'm surprised we got it done in such a short period of time at all. It was great fun doing that show. So uh, we're going to be doing some more of those. I'll be doing one with John Roderick. He wants to do Blues Brothers. I've got Jeff Kanata, and I will be doing Annie Hall and some other, some other fun ones coming up. So I'll tell you about those as, uh, as, as we get the details worked out. But I'm personally I'm very excited about that. Very excited. Let me do a quick uh, sponsor break. I'm going to blaze through the sponsors because I'm blazing through the show. That's, that's the way it's going to be today. And everyone's going to be happy with it because these sponsors are great. Linda, lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A, lynda.com slash D-B-H. Think of it like this. 3,000 videos. More than 3,000 videos that you go and you, you pay a flat rate every month. You get access to all those videos. Every single one of the videos, you have access to it. You watch as many times as you want. You can jump in there. And when you jump in to watch that video, you're not going to spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure out where, where is this one part where they explain Photoshop layers? I can't find it. No, you do the search, you find it, you watch it, you get in, you get out. That's the, that's the way they work. And they've got tons and tons of great topics, topography, foundations of color, tons of things for recording and podcasting, recording and engineering. It's great. And you're going to get 10 days free. If you go to lynda.com slash dbh, that'll give you the free 10-day trial. It'll support this show. L-Y-N-D-A, lynda.com slash dbh. If you enjoy the show and you you want it to stay around, take 30 seconds. Go to that URL, lynda.com slash dbh, sign up, and uh, and enjoy a free 10-day trial and you support the heck out of this show. That's that's exactly what I'm asking to do. So try that and uh, and thank you. What do you think, Hattie? Think about it. Okay. Uh, so the first link that I have for you guys, surface three, there's a review over in Ars Technica by, uh, by Peter Bright, Peter Bright and Peter Bright says, is it better? Is it really better? If you're, if you're watching this video, it looks, it, it, this thing looks like an iPad with a blue keyboard glued to the front of it. And that's fine. You know what? That's fine. We all like tablets. There's only so many ways you can innovate in a tablet, really. What can you do to innovate with a tablet? It's going to be like a, a 16 by 9-ish sort of-ish shape. 
with a touch screen. Well, the way that Microsoft innovates is they glue this keyboard to the front of it. Now, what, uh, what our friend Peter Bright says, he writes, uh, he writes to is. understand the Surface 3, you must first understand the Surface Pro 3. The Surface 3 is not the third Surface. It's not a successor to the Surface RT or the Surface 2. It's very confusing, and Windows always does this kind of thing. Windows is always using Windows. Microsoft is always using Windows to refer to things. Everything is Windows. Everything is Office. Everything is Surface. Basically, this thing comes from the Surface Pro. That that's where this is descended from. And he's he says, "All right, it's all right. It's a familiar design." He says, and he's got some pictures of it. I always see these things propped up in front of like sportscasters and newscasters. And if you're looking at this picture, you, you'll see, you'll recognize it instantly from, you know, being on TV. You'll notice it, you know, if you've ever watched any kind of sporting events or anything. Because it's got that cool little kickstand. I'm sorry, kickstand is cool. Talk about things you can innovate. Is a kickstand an innovation? Well, I, in this case, it is the first tablet to ha have a stand that has a built-in kickstand. It looks good. It looks good up in front of somebody on a screen, on, on TV. Lots of ports. Apple going to one port, Surface adding millions of ports. They made the badge shiny. Look at, look at this, this is his camera picture. He could have, he could have combed his hair for the camera. I'm just saying. He got some rear camera. He's taking a picture out of his, to his parking garage. This is in the review. Look at these pictures. What did he, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, I don't know, would it kill him to go outside? And <laughs> would it kill him to go outside and, and take some pictures out in the, in the world? The pictures that he puts up here is a picture of him sitting in, in his home office. A picture of some, some toys and a picture looking outside of his, uh, his apartment onto his parking garage, the looking at a tree. I mean, could you, can, can you do better than that in, in this review? It's for a review. It's for a review for Ars Technica. Go in and take a picture and walk out in the world. I don't know. But anyway, there's, a, you know, bench, he benchmarked it against the Surface, the Surface 3 against the Surface Pro 3, the Dell XPS 13 iPad Air 2. Here's the thing. Nobody cares if the iPad Air 2 is slower or not because it's the better, it's better. Nobody that I know, I do not know a single human being in the whole world that I don't know personally. Of everyone I know personally, I don't know anybody using a Surface. I don't know anybody who owns a Surface. I don't know anybody who's even bought and returned a Surface. <laughs> I don't, just, who has a Surface? I don't know anybody that has one. I'm not saying they're not great. But people aren't buying. Look at these benchmarks. Someone spent time on this. <laughs> Someone spent time benchmarking the Surface 3, the Surface Pro 3, the Dell XPS 13, and the iPad Air 2. I don't care what CPU is in an iPad Air. I don't care what CPU is in my iPhone. I just want it to be as fast as possible. I'm not going to like... It, here's when CPUs matter. They matter when you have a choice. They matter when you have a choice. And you don't have a choice if you're buying an iPad. You get the, This is the new iPad. That's the one I'm getting. That was my choice was to buy it or not. <laughs> the Surface. <laughs> Surface 3. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just no one do people care about this. I don't know. <laughs> there we go. All right. The uh, Game of Thrones leak that happened. That was very upsetting for HBO. But guess what? Guess what HBO is doing now? <laughs> They're sending takedown notices to Periscope. If you've been under a rock, Periscope is the live streaming app owned by Twitter. <laughs> Users were sharing streams of the beginning of Games of Thrones fifth season. 
Now, I don't even get from this article that they're showing the actual show itself. It just looks like they're sharing just the, like the intro. And, that, and, they're, and they're sending takedown notices to Periscope, not to even show the intro. I, you know, back in the old days, we used to have these things called commercials, and that's how TV shows uh, made their money. And then we, we had this amazing new thing called home box office that came out. Home box office. <laughs> and a home box office charged the consumers directly. And eventually at home, in our own home, we had this thing called, uh, called a VCR, VHS. And we could record TV shows and we could watch them as many times as we wanted. <laughs> and then, then you could go to Blockbuster and you could rent a VHS tape. And if it wasn't screwed up and it actually worked, you know, you could watch that at home. And we used to copy them. We used to buy these dual decks or you'd get a, a, a two VHS things and connect them to each other and make a copy and give it to your friends or watch it at home. I mean, I never did that. Of course, I never did that. And now, you know, how are you going to get around this recording stuff? You got DVRs at home, but everyone's, everyone can access this stuff. And the way to do it is not a torrent. I've got to tell you. Don't use torrents. Torrents are highly illegal. But that's how people do it. They use a torrent, and they don't care that they're traceable. People who are more worried about that kind of thing, instead of using a torrent, they use a news group. And they, there are ways. There are ways, my friends. There are ways. I could, I could get you a news group by 3 p.m. with nail polish. You don't want to know. Apple has given a custom as if it's not as if it's not uh, amazing enough that Apple makes solid gold watches in 2015. Just think about it. Really just think about it. There is a gold Apple Watch edition been it has been gifted to Karl Lagerfeld, a famous designer. And what makes it special is that it has a gold link bracelet as depicted here in this picture. Fashion designer now has, he's the head of Chanel and Fendi and his own fashion thing. And he rolls in with a solid gold edition watch with a, with a link bracelet. No one else has even seen this link bracelet. It's custom. You can't even buy this. It was gifted to him. You know what they say about the rich? The rich get even more stuff for free because they're rich, because they're famous, even though they can afford it. He could afford to buy this watch, I'm sure, but he gets this gift because Apple wants him to wear it. Apple doesn't want me to wear anything. This is this right here. This is my $35 Timex. Got this thing on uh, either Target or Amazon, I forget. And so the question remains, did I order an Apple Watch? Well, I've told you. I told you I ordered an Apple Watch. And, uh, and I had a good time ordering it at 4 in the morning. Because I, I just woke up when I woke up. But I think I'm going to cancel the order. I think I want to buy. I think I would rather use a third of that money or half of that money or maybe even 100% of that money to buy a watch that I'll be able to, that will be a beautifully designed mechanical movement with little gems inside of it to, to keep it on time. And I'll be able to hand that down to my son maybe when he graduates high school or college or something. What about that? Wouldn't that be crazy? That's not what Apple wants me to do with that money. But wouldn't that be kind of amazing? Instead of buying a watch, for six, seven hundred dollars that I'll have to replace in a year because it won't be up to date anymore or two years, let's say two. That's gonna buzz my wrist every time somebody wants to text me or tell me that it's raining outside, even though I have these big windows right here to tell me it's raining outside. Instead of that watch, what if I were to get something that human beings made with craft and care and I could then keep that thing and wind it every morning myself, just like my granddad and my dad used to do. And I can give this thing to my son. 
And he could say, you know what? My dad got this watch, 2015. And, uh, you know, 10, 15 years later, he gave it to me when I got my first job. Now I wear it. Wouldn't that be cool? I have a feeling your Apple Watch may not uh, be that item. While we're talking about saving money, let me tell you a little something about Wealthfront. Wealthfront. It's an automated investment service that makes it easy to invest your money the right way. You go and you fill out a pro. I'm going to make this simple for you because I want all of you to try this. I want all of you to try it today, like right now. First of all, just going there and signing up, you're doing yourself a favor, but you're also doing me a favor. You're supporting the show. It makes it easy to view all your accounts in one place. It makes it easy to manage your investments. And they, they handle the whole thing. You fill out this little profile, and the little profile is genius because with that, they determine how they should invest your money, conservative, aggressive how they should reinvest your dividends, maximize your after-tax returns. And they do all this. It, it's it's uh, commission-free on all the trades. And they do this for 0.25% per year. That's less than a quarter of the cost of traditional investment advisors, which is crazy. They employ ETFs. Do you know what an ETF is? I have no idea what an ETF is, but they have them. I want, I want them to have ETFs. I don't know any extraterrestrial frontiers they have that that's what that stands for they've got it and the extraterrestrials track 11 major asset classes to ensure you're diversified your fees are low and your portfolio is smart about taxes i'm not 100 percent sure that they have extraterrestrials but i think they do five by five listeners can get their first ten thousand dollars managed for free when they visit wealthfront.com wealthfront.com slash five by five and uh, the, the uh, extraterrestrials have asked that I read this uh, disclaimer. Wealthfront is an SEC registered investment advisor. Brokerage services are offered through Wealthfront Brokerage Corporation, member FINRA and SIPC. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell securities. Investing in securities involves risks, and there is a possibility of losing money past performance. There's no guarantee of future results. Please visit Wealthfront.com to read the full disclosure. They got extraterrestrials in there. It's nuts. I'm not kidding. Well, if, if you've looked... If you've looked at, uh, at the WWDC announcement here, I'm showing this to you. If you've looked at this announcement that came out, you can see at the center of this image, I think John Gruber was the first one to point it out on Daring Fireball. He says that this image right here looks a lot like an Apple TV. So here, for your uh, viewing enjoyment, is uh, a page on Mac rumors. Friend, friend of the show, Arnold Kim, running that. Look at this Apple TV in this image. Just the dude is holding it, the magic hand dude. And then you look at that boy. Those do look alike, don't they? And he's at the epicenter of change. What is at the epicenter of your life? What is the epicenter of your household? What is the epicenter of your home? Guess what, kids? It's 2015. It's the television. That's right. The television's in the center of your home. The television is the center of everyone's home. It's not the bookshelf. It's not the dinner table. If you even sit down to dinner anymore. It's none of those things. It's the TV. It's the television. That's the center of your home. Just be honest about it. You've got a big surprise coming to you. Anyway. June 8 to 12 in San Francisco is uh, Apple's WWDC. The price dropped the Apple TV on March 9th. It just happened. 69 bucks. Seems like a good time to buy, right? Wouldn't you say $69? Good time to buy? No, it's not a good time to buy because in a couple months, something really exciting is going to happen. Will it be new hardware? Probably. There's going to be a lot of new streaming services coming out of Apple. Very, very soon. I, I have, I don't really have a whole lot of insider information. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not on the outs with Apple or anything. They just don't care about me. They don't care at all about me. <laughs> so I don't get any information, but I have, I heard, I heard something. I, I, I heard something. And I heard that, uh, that guess what? going to be some big announcements in the space of, of Apple. Now, people are, people know this. It's not, it's not like I've heard anything that other people haven't also been told or been able to figure out. But pay attention. And don't be fooled. They're trying to clear their inventory out. 
this Apple TV. That's why they dropped it to 69 bucks. That's why. Well, anyway, friend of the show Matt, over at Mac Rumors. Friends of the show. They have a really nice write-up. What's next for Apple TV? Here's a quote. The revamped set-top box may, uh, may, may, may be unveiled at WWDC in June alongside a new streaming television service. Rumors have suggested the updated Apple TV will be a, quote, significant overhaul of the existing version. Support for Siri and the App Store. Well, that's pretty neat because we have that with our, uh, our friend uh, Amazon Fire. You can talk to that and it will play stuff for you. It's pretty cool. It's said to, this, this box, still quoting from this article, it's said to feature Apple's A8 chip and a dramatic increase in internal storage. With the addition of Siri, the Apple TV will be able to control HomeKit-enabled home automation devices via voice. Previous rumors have confirmed that the Apple TV will serve as a home automation hub for HomeKit devices when they launch. It will not feature 4K video streaming, right? Because so many people out there in the world have enough bandwidth to support a 4K streaming. Right, all four of you. Oh, I know Europe has it, whatever. The rumored streaming service is said to be a web-based offering that will bundle approximately 25 channels for 30 to 40 per month. Apple's in talks with several content providers, including ABC, CBS, Fox, Disney, Viacom, and Discovery. These are all rumors. We don't know for sure. But I think they are right. We will see. Right now, today, for me, for me, the Apple TV sucks. It's the worst set-top box out there. Loading, loading, loading. Authorizing, authorizing, authorizing. If I hadn't spent money on buying movies for my kids and iTunes, my Apple TV would be unplugged in a box in the closet. That's pretty much all I would do. Now, I do like the podcast app that they have because 5x5 is a content provider, and that makes me feel pretty happy. Uh, but other than that, I don't really care for it. What do I use instead? We've got two or three Rokus, and we've got an Amazon Fire TV. For me, for my money, Amazon Fire TV is the best thing out there today. I'm very excited about what Apple might come out with in June. Because if they come out with something that's as good as or better than those other devices, I will be thrilled. Because I already have. Now, will we be able to use our existing Apple TV hardware with the new streaming service? Or will we have to upgrade? Will there be uh, an old version of the Apple TV and a new one that's more powerful? I don't know. Nobody knows right now. <laughs> And that's, that's what Apple has up its sleeve. More on this article about uh, the content struggles. Will, will there be CBS? Will there be Walt Disney? We don't know. But they're negotiating, negotiating, negotiating. Do you want Apple to control all of your viewing habits? Do you want Apple to control what's in your pocket, on your wrist, and on the desk in front of you? I don't. Well, who do I want to control it? No one. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing. You know, people talk about not trusting Google. Google seems evil to a lot of people. Apple seems good to most, most people. If you ask them, is Apple a good company or a bad company? I think most people would say that Apple is good. And generally, I agree with that. I think Apple is a good company. But they're v becoming very, very, very powerful. And they're getting their hooks into us. And we're, we're, we're doing it very willingly. And the fact is, they make the best stuff. They make the best computers. They make the best phones. On the hardware side, I think they make the best everything in technology. And if they were to make a car, I think it would be one of the best cars. And they make pretty good software still. They used to make the best software too. So they're in our lives. And they're deeply entrenched in our lives. And if Apple controls the TV, if Apple controls your TV and they control the computer in your pocket and now you're wearing something on your wrist when you weren't wearing anything before and you ask yourself, are these things really making us, our lives better? Are they making us smarter? Are they helping us? For a long time, I, I got by without my iPhone, but my life got a lot better with the iPhone as far as being in touch with things. Was that what life is really about? Twitter, Twitter, 
as homepage uh, sampling of tweets to lure unregistered users. Twitter's big problem has been getting, you know, I, I think of Twitter as being this huge thing. The fact is they're not growing the way they want to be growing. They're not growing. Isn't that crazy? They're not growing the way Facebook is. Well, they came out with a brand new version of their homepage. Here's a picture of it if you're watching. Kurt, what is it? I think he spells it Wagner. That's your You like that? That's your name, dude. They have a new version of their homepage. And uh, I think people are, are, are interested in this. 125 million people have been greeted with Twitter.com with nothing but a single image and a sign-up box. Because 125 million people per month go to twitter.com and don't sign in and they see nothing, a login. What? Are you kidding me? What a joke. What a missed opportunity. How long has Twitter been around and they don't show you anything useful on the main page? Well, now they're starting to. Now they have links to take you to pop artists, actors and actresses, TV shows and stars, cute animals. All this stuff is very valuable, I guess. You go there and, and they've been apparently they've been testing the home page. But now it is their main page. You'll actually see tweets from real users. And maybe people will go and look around. Instead of this dull, if you're looking, look at this dull login page. Log in, new to Twitter, sign up. That's all you saw. And you know what Twitter is. Connect with your friends and other fascinating people. How? What does it look like? How does it work? People keep telling me to try Twitter. I don't know if I should try Twitter or not. Oh, look at this. Oh, see what's happening now. Look at it. Come on. Twitter is about the content and you're showing them nothing when they get to the main page. Hello. I just don't, I just don't get it. Well, anyway, they figured it out now, didn't they? <laughs> Samsung has a team. Of, uh, in their company, within their company, that all the team is going to do is focus on making screens for Apple, Apple devices. Because Samsung makes all of the screens for iPads and MacBooks and tons of other Apple devices. And all they do is just, here, well, they've got a whole team now. In order, here's a quote from a Bloom, Bloomberg business. In order to strengthen management, Samsung Display split its liquid crystal display and organic light emitting diodes units. As of April 1st, says Kim Ho Jung, a spokesman uh, for Samsung. And he declined to uh, offer any further uh, sure. comments. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting because outside of that, these companies are, are competitors. And they, they generally seem to hate each other. And yet, here's Apple spending tons and tons of money to get these screens. You know, we know Apple's working on a processor. But screens are a whole different ball game. Whole different ball game. Let me tell you about my last sponsor. It's Trip Case. Trip Case. It's great because I've talked about this. I talked about this at the Startup Riot on the talk that, that changed the world forever when I dropped it. Basically, there's, there is one commodity that you cannot generate more of, and that is time. You can't make more time. Anyone can go out and work, work more and make more money, but you can't make more time, right? So you got to buy your time back. How do you do that? Look at a company like Uber, right? You show up in a town you've never been in, tap, 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 boom, there's a car, picks you up, takes you where you want to go. You don't have to hail a cab. You don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. Saves you time, gets you around faster. Tripcase understands that mentality. Now, when you get that flight confirmation, when you get that hotel reservation, you forward it to the Tripcase email address. They automatically know, oh, Dan's going on a new trip. Dan's going on a trip. Where is he going? Well, let's, let's show him what the weather is going to be like. Let's set up Uber. Let's integrate Seat Guru so he can pick his seats better. While, you, while Dan is there, we're going to let him remember the places that he went to. So if there's a good restaurant he finds or a fun place to go, we can remind him of that the next time he's there. Oh, gate change, gate change. We'll tell him about that. 
All of this happens in one single app. The Uber integration, the free flight alerts, the sharing of your trip, remembering the place, destination weather, seat maps, all of this built into the app. And the app will talk to your Pebble, it'll talk to your Android Wear, and it'll talk to your uh, $10,000 gold Apple Watch. All in one app. Well, the uh, Apple Watch support's coming soon. Anyway, app is free. Go to TripCase, T-R-I-P-Case, TripCase.com slash D-B-H. Click that link on the, uh, the show notes, which are at 5x5.tv slash D-B-H slash 29. And all the other links and everything else that we've talked about are going to be right there for you. Tinder has added the ability to show off Instagram photos to potential matches. Ooh. The 34 most recent photos from your Instagram account, in fact. Pretty neat, right? Because it's it's a neat way to sort of show who you are and what you're doing. Neat article here on the LA Times. The new feature underscores how some teenagers and young adults are gravitating from Facebook to newer apps such as Snapchat and Facebook-owned Instagram. A, quote, substantial percentage, unquote, of people on Tinder already list their Instagram username in their bios. So Tinder says, well, why not hook up? All of this stuff. We're listening to our users, our vision, Rad said, noting that new features should lead to more fruitful connections among the 26 million pairings on the app each day. There is so much dating out there. I don't even, I don't even understand how people do this. I mean, like, I understand exactly how they do it. I just don't understand. If, if you are, you know, out there and you're single and you're like, what, what am I going to do? Do I, do I go to a, a, my friend's uh, little get-together and they, they set me up with someone? Do I go to this bar? Hope that I find someone at a bar because that happens. Uh, do I go to Tinder and then flirt with people I've never really met and now they see my Instagram? It's very weird and it's personal, but it's also impersonal at the same time. And uh, I encourage you to, uh, to think about that. I found this just while I was browsing, this next link. These things are called, it's a funny name, they're called dubs. Dubs. What dubs are, and they should sponsor this show for crying out loud. They're, they're essentially earplugs, right? Now, I'm the kind of person I wear ear. If I, if I know I'm going to be in some place that's loud, I will wear earplugs. I don't care. I don't care how dumb I look because I want to protect my hearing. God, these guys should sponsor this show. Shame on them. For crying out loud, shame on them. Anyway, they, they call these, they don't call them uh, earplugs. They call them acoustic filters because what they do, and if you're, if you're looking, you can see they look almost like sort of mini Bluetooth uh, headphones. Have you ever seen like the Bluetooth headphones? But they, they, instead of, they, they fit completely in your ear. They protect your ears if you're in a loud place. But they, they uh, allow just the right amount and kind of sound through. So that instead of muffling stuff, instead of muffling the sounds that are around you, they allow the sound to come through with technology. Because they had acoustic engineers build these things. And they let you target specific frequencies. So you still hear the world. You still hear things around you. Just without uh, deafening yourself. So this is really cool. And they look cool. So you don't look like a, a moron. I think I might have to get some of these 25 bucks. They say it's good for concerts, sports games, travel. I guess you can wear them on. Uh, it says the roar of an airplane taking off can expose travelers to more than 110 decibels. I don't know if that's true inside the plane, but whatever. These things look really cool. I want to get a pair of these really bad. If you are, you know, six degrees, they say six degrees. Uh, if you are connected in, to dubs, let me know, because I would love to do a review of these things, unboxing and review with our new camera. The last uh, thing I'm going to tell you about today, acetaminophen, which uh, most people know as Tylenol, but you can buy the generic called acetaminophen, how we say it around here, around these parts. Reduces not only pain, but pleasure too. This is true. Well, you, what do you take when you have a headache? Do you take Tylenol or acetaminophen? Yes. It works by regulating, this is an article on CNN, works by regulating the part of your brain that controls your body's temperature and inhibits the synthesis of prostaglandin in the central nervous system. But they also found a new study thinks that they could, maybe it's reducing your pleasure as well. So not, not only does it reduce pain, but it reduces pleasure. 
So here's how they did this, uh, this study. They showed 82 college, it's always college students. They showed 82 college students, 40 photographs, some of highly pleasant images, such as children with kittens and some of highly unpleasant images, such as children who were malnourished. Look at this cat. Look at this starving person. Cat, starving person. Half the participants in the study were given, quote, an acute dose of acetaminophen, a thousand milligrams, and the other half were given a placebo with the same appearance. The subjects were then asked to rate the photos according to how unpleasant or pleasant they were. Those who took the acetaminophen rated all the photos less extremely than those who took the placebo. In other words, quote, positive photos were not seen as positively under the influence of acetaminophen and negative photos were not seen as negatively, unquote. Drug did not alter the sense of magnitude in general, though. What does that mean? They followed up by testing another group of 85 people to see whether the change in judgment applied just to emotions or whether the drug blunted people's evaluation of magnitude in general. So they showed them the same uh, blunting of emotional reactions, but they didn't change how much blue they saw in each photo. So they weren't, they were, they didn't know that they were acting differently. They weren't aware that their emotions were impacted. They weren't aware, in other words, that they were under the influence. And if you, if you wonder how many people are taking acetaminophen in general, 23% of American adults, that is 52 million people, use a medicine containing acetaminophen each week. Do you take a lot of, uh, do you take a lot of pain medicine? You know, when, when, when my back was kind of screwed up, I took some Advil. Oh, ibuprofen, whatever. But that, you know, like I, I, I take that because it's an anti-inflammation, not because I can't, you know, I, I try to deal with the pain. But do you, I know people who take Advil like almost every day, like on a regular basis, like take Advil or they take Tylenol or something on a regular basis. Not a good idea. It's bad for your liver. Did you know that if you take too much Tylenol, you can get, uh, you can get rashes, liver failure, and death death. This happens all the time. Anyway, on that happy note, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, we will be back tomorrow at our regular time. That is 11 Eastern, 10 Central, 8 Pacific time live. And uh, Hattie will be in the office. I'll allow her back into the office uh, tomorrow. <gasps> yes, it's true. It's true, Hattie. It's true. I don't want to catch anything. So she will not be sick. And uh, she wasn't sick today. She's just uh, very busy trying to, sell, trying to sell ads on this show. So that's all we got for you. You can find me on Twitter. I am at Dan Benjamin. Do check out those links. They support the show. And uh, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a good one. And now I turn off the video stream. Goodbye to my video friends. It's wonderful way up here in TV land. And I hope you enjoyed the show.